Hi, Alex from Lumsden Agency and welcome back to the monthly catch up. This month I want to talk about interest rates. The Reserve Bank's about to meet as they do on the first Tuesday and uh, all signs point to the fact that they're going to leave everything on hold. Now what does that really mean for you? If you're anything like me, it means that every real estate agent in your feed is going to show you how well they know how to use Canva and they're going to post a tile that says interest rates have been left on hold. But what does that really mean for you? Let's think about it for a minute. Right now in Sydney, we're seeing rental returns, which are around two or 3%, which is pretty standard for Sydney. But we're also seeing people borrowing money around the 2%, which means that suddenly in Sydney, you can get a positively geared property relatively easy, which is almost unheard of. Now, in my opinion, you're absolutely crazy if you're not buying an investment property right now. But that's just my opinion. I'm not a financial advisor. If that does sound interesting to you, send us a message and we can put you in touch with the experts. Speaking of experts, Sitting here with Alan from Velocity Fitness, my health and lifestyle coach, specializing in corporate health and wellness. Alan, thanks for being here. Hey mate, easy, happy to be here. Alan, at the moment, a lot of people are going back to the office. There's a lot of people sitting at their desk again. Maybe they can't break up their work day in the way that they used to when they were uh, working from home. Uh, tell us some of the things that you're seeing from, from people uh, as an effect of that. Yep. As you mentioned, the CBD is getting busier. Um, there's more and more people coming into the city, which is fantastic. Um, cafes are busier, the gym's getting busier as well, which is great. So the biggest difference between working from home and working in the office is gonna be that flexibility. So when you're in that home environment, you do, you know, you don't always have to be at your desk where your boss can see you. You can get up, you can move around, you can, you can do your errands or whatever it is as well. Um, so the biggest thing will be trying to keep up that habit at, the, at, at work which is going for your coffees with your mates, going for your catch-ups, getting up and moving every 45 to 60 minutes um, would be ideal. One of, the, one of the key benefits though of coming back to the office, um, if you're working from home, you probably wouldn't have the same ergonomic setup or OH&S um, order that you have, have at home. The biggest thing that I found with people coming back to the gym is they've been sitting at home with a bad posture, bad setup, their desk is at the wrong height, their seats are the wrong height. So when they go back into the gym and train, they've got those underlying issues and then they try to train like they did a year before. And that's where a lot of injuries, reckon, I reckon, will, will start to happen. So really important when you get back into that, that lifestyle of, of commuting to and from work, um, just be a little bit more careful about the kind of injuries that you might potentially have as well. You mentioned posture. Uh, obviously, we've been training together for a long time. Um, a lot of people often comment that I have quite a good posture. What are some of the things that we do in our sessions to make sure that that stays the same? Yep. So you spend a lot of time on your phone, whether it's messaging on social media, a lot of time on your laptop sending emails. All the corporates um, that I would see would do that as well. So what we call like internal rotation in the shoulder, um, um, protracted scapula as well. So you're going to be really tight here and then you're going to have that forward head tilt coming through this way as well. So what I focus on with my programs and what we do together here is on the posterior chain. So a lot of pulling actions to get into external rotation, a lot of actions to get the shoulder blades popping back as well. So probably about 60 to 70% of the programs that I would do for you and for my clients involve getting into that postural, um, um, postural position here to really try and correct everything that, that's gone wrong um, over the last 12 months or whatever it might be. Yeah, so one of the things that I really enjoy when, when we train together is uh, that you're very holistic about a lot of things. You know, sometimes we don't train as hard, but we spend a lot of time talking about what's going on outside the gym. Um, talk to me about your, your theories around that. Yep, so that's kind of what I would call the difference between a personal trainer and a coach. So, you know, the personal trainer is very physically um, focused with, you know, what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing, how intense you should be going in the workout. You know, especially with corporates and, you know, old, as you get older, you've got to be a lot more careful about everything else that surrounds it as well. So, you know, everyone's got their own personal circumstances, but things like how you slept last night, you know, whether you had a big weekend, you know, if, you know I'm undergoing a renovation at the moment, which is really stressful. Other people have, you know, divorces, they've got, you know, family issues, business issues that come up. And stress just really causes not just a physical load, but also a mental load as well. That's going to determine the, the best result that you're going to get in the gym. So, you know, it, there's no point if you've had a fight with your partner and you've had a terrible night's sleep and you come in and I just smash you like I, like I know that you can handle. 
but you know, in that circumstances, you know, we, we, we modified a little bit just to kind of take into those, those, those circumstances. So a lot of, what a lot of people don't understand is that stress is you know, just a, a one big ball. Your body doesn't really recognize physical stress or mental stress, is your body reacts to stress the same way. So in the gym, you know, doing a heavy deadlift or you know, you're pushing the sled or you're doing whatever is gonna create physical stress to, to your body but then it's gonna to add to all that mental stress as well that you've got as well. So it's kind of piling stress on top of each other is really gonna just be really detrimental. So for you to get long-term benefit and be able to train and get the best results over the long term, we, we modify the program over the, over the period and, and that you know, gets the best results. So um, just quickly, three quick tips for highly stressed corporates, what would you say? Great question. I mean, I could be here all night to talk about that, but the, the biggest thing would be recognizing your stress triggers. So what is it that causes you to react in a, in a stressful way? So when I say stress, it's not like, oh, you get annoyed or pissed off at something, but stress is like the increase in the heart rate, the increase in the breathing, the increase in the adrenaline and cortisol that switches your body from inaction to action. The problem is there's so many of those things nowadays. So it could be that you're late, to work because you missed the bus and you're like, ah, I'm late for my meeting and then that just causes a lot of stress. Or you get to work and there's a, a, a client that you really hate dealing with and they've got a list of demands that, that they want from you immediately. That's gonna cause all that to spike as well. So just recognizing what causes you to stress means that you can actually put things in place to protect it. So for example, you keep on missing your bus and that's one of your stress triggers. Cool, why don't you leave the house five minutes earlier tomorrow and that's gonna reduce that level of stress. If you've got clients that keep on demanding, keep on demanding, you know, whether you're in the position to change that, if you can push back on the client and be like, look, you know, setting boundaries, setting expectations, making that clearer, or you raise it up the next level to your boss or their boss. And, and that way you can kind of reduce the level of stress rather than just keep fighting against, um, you know, a, a losing battle and just having that multiple stress over multiple days. Um, the second thing is once you've recognized it and you've set boundaries, then it's about how you deal with it as well. Um, when you're stressed, that's a good response. Stress is, is, is meant to keep you alive. So if you feel hungry, that's a stress. Cool, I'm gonna go eat food. If you're feeling sleepy, that's a stress. It means that your body needs to rest and recover. Whereas when you, when you have an email that's really a, a client deadline, where's that off switch? When you send that email, cool, you might experience a bit of relief, but then another email comes in and then you get another phone call and then a, a colleague comes over the top and wants something straight away as well. So there's no on and off switch in, in our modern life. Whereas back in you know, old caveman times, you can just, you know, you run away from a danger, you survive. You feel really hungry, you harvest some food or you hunt some food and then you survive. And then you have on and off. Whereas the problem is you, there's no on and off switch nowadays. So those are kind of maybe the, the three steps to break it down is to recognize your stress triggers put things in place to stop them from happening again, but then find ways of, of dealing with it as well. So whether it's you know massage, self-care, journaling, getting a good night's sleep um, you know, is a really good way to try and manage that stress as well. Yeah, cool. I, um, most people probably don't know, I was, a, I was a personal trainer a while ago. I've always been quite into sport and fitness. I've always been very fit. Um, one thing I said to you the other day is that I've never done what I'm doing right now in sport and been so injury free and I put it all down to, to your training and, and your programming. Um, if people want some advice or they want some coaching, how can they get in contact with you? Yeah, before I give the contact details, I do want to touch on that a little bit because that, that made me so happy. Like there's being able to train injury free it just increases your longevity and you get more results. If you try to push all the time and then you have to get injured, you have to take a step back. That might be four or six weeks off training. And you know, even taking one week off training, you've got to almost start from scratch again. So that kind of injury prevention is, is, is really, really powerful. And again, the difference between a PT and a coach is being able to, to manage that process as well. I love sports as well. So you've kind of got the strength side of things and the conditioning side of things. So for example, with you know AFL, I love my Sydney Swans. If anyone's a Sydney Swans fan, please get in touch with me. Um, or anyone, sorry, anyone who works at the Sydney Swans, please get in touch with me. They'll do a whole preseason, which is building up their strength base, their cardio base, all that kind of stuff. But in season, it's about injury management and injury prevention. So for example, for you in terms of your triathlon training, a lot of that is front loaded stuff. You know, you've got your quads, arms, shoulders. Um, so again, we've got to balance that out and make sure that we're 
stabilizing the joints and the muscles and then balancing out the, 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 the back of the body as well. And just by doing that and keeping the body in balance, your body naturally prevents injuries because imbalance and instability is what causes those injuries. So strength is, you know, that makes sense. Everyone knows what building strength is, but the conditioning side of things is really, really powerful because it just, you know, the, 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 the looser joints, like the shoulders need to be protected. If you've got tight hips, that needs to be managed as well. So having a really knowledgeable um, coach on, on your side is you know, really powerful for your long-term health and fitness goals. Um, in terms of getting in touch with me, we're at Fitness First George Street here, um, next to Wynyard, so that's where I do most of my in-person training. Um, I do a lot of online stuff as well, so online nutrition coaching and lifestyle coaching. I'm also a qualified life coach and an NLP practitioner as well. So I bring a lot of that into the mindset and the environment change, which is really, really powerful too. So find me on Facebook, Velocity Fitness Group. Um, I'm also on Instagram, um, Velocity Fitness Group as well. Awesome, so much info. A lot longer than we usually go for, but I really enjoyed it. Alan, thanks for being here. Yep, always happy to chat with you, mate.